This thing should have been here two hours ago, Eric. What happened? It forgot. And so were you when you're 500 years old. Letter from the previous owner. Thank you. Giving its history. And, P.S., how glad they are to be shot at it. Like that. Oh, they don't make coffins like that anymore, Lord Hold it, George. fellas. Hold it, fellas. Flashing your education, Beth. <clears throat> One 16th century Gothic oak chest. Note the pierced metalwork and carved front. Go well in Gimbert Towers. But not as well as a lady I've just met. Maniac. What are you talking about? You've seen me coming on. Oh, I know it's your latest fad, Charlie. Bow porcelain, pre-1759. But is it genuine? Oh, Charlie, please. Is it genuine? That's the only question I ask these days of antiques or women. One and the same thing in your case, Charlie. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. Up, 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 you two. Come on, this thing is a priceless antique, not a bench to pub garden. What do you got there? Cheddar, circa 1893. Yeah, but with modern pickle oh. added. What do you want? More and more for us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, lot 242. A Gothic oak chest from the 16th century. This impressive piece is offered in superb condition, so may I open the bidding at 3,000 pounds? 3,000, anyway. 3,000 pounds. 3,200? 3,200, 3,400, 3,600, 3,800. 4,000 pounds? Any more at 4,000 pounds? Are you all done at 4,000 pounds? 4,500. 4,500 pounds. <clears throat> Are you all done at 4,500 pounds? Sold to Mr. Jonathan. Wilshire. <laughs> Excuse me. Nice one, eh? It takes me back about ten years. There used to be this old bird called Fanny the Fainter. For a tenner, she'd drop like a souffle while somebody else made a switch. You know, copy for a genuine piece. Somebody's just been shafted. Excuse me. Mark my words. Well? Well, put it this way, Val. It's champagne time. <laughs> the old girl fainted OK. Right on cue. So, what next? Well, you're the craftsman. You tell me. Uh, the Derby teapot. How's that grab you? So, Charlotte, what happened to the cow jugs? They're the main reason I came. Sorry, Charlie. The owner withdrew the cow creamers at the last minute. Pity. I'm having a petit soiree this evening at Felsham Hall. Old friends over, just to sample the cellar. Why don't you join us? Bring a friend. Uh, thank you. That would be... Sounds fun. Oh. Uh, Jonathan Wilshire, Charles Gimbert. Nice to see you. Hi. So, eight o'clock. See you both, then. Then. Mm -hmm. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? I think surprised is the word. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? I like surprises. 4,500, I believe. And what on earth do you want with a gothic chest? It's a present for you. <laughs> well, what on earth do I want with it? Come look. There's that picture I bought for you at Eddie Mabel's gallery, July 91. Remember? I remember the high price you paid. I'll tell you what. When you think we're finished, I mean really finished, pack up everything that reminds you of me, put it in that trunk, and ship it to me wherever I am. All right? <laughs> Hello, Charlie. I don't recall inviting you here. Your memory's going, you know. No, it isn't. Look, you owe me two months' rent. No, my steps will be taken. Charlotte, steps will be taken. <laughs> Charlotte, hello. Do you know Mr. Jonathan Wilshire, Lovejoy? Proud owner of a gothic chest. Oh, I've just been admiring Mr. Gimbert's house. I've been in the family long. Uh, since 1792. Just not your family, Charlie. <laughs> I said not your. Um, let me show you around, Mr. Wilshire. <laughs> Percy! 
Oh, hello, kid. Hello. Car cream is, is everything about mine host, don't you agree? <laughs> you take the man out of the bog, lovers, but not the bog out of the man, and Charlie Kimber is undoubtedly bog. Middle name's Pete, you know. Percy! Oh, hello. Got a little something I uh, picked up today I'd like your advice on. What? Oh, absolutely delightful, Charlie. A little darling. Yes. <laughs> Love, Joy. Ooh. Drawing room. Who was that? Oh, that was Percy Broderick, otherwise known as Percy the Porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one thing they can't say about Charlie Gimbert is that he doesn't pay over the odds for history. What do you think, Perse? I think you've been uh, screwed, glued and papered over, Charlie. <laughs> oh, never. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, uh, there's something missing. You say, um, Lovejoy put you onto this? Yeah. Oh, steady on, Purse. I may have said harsh things about him in the past, but he does know his business. No, 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 no. You see, there's no sparkle. After 1755, a certain Mr. Fry, top dog at the bow factory, improved the enamelling, and then, quite by chance, it would twinkle here and there. Impurities in the metallic oxides. Exactly. It's mm. precisely that that you can't reproduce these days. It should sparkle. It should sparkle. But it doesn't. And it doesn't sparkle. It must have broken the heart, whoever made that, because otherwise she is perfect. She is, but she's not the one I showed you this afternoon, Charlie. Honestly, Lovejoy, you strut around this manor like a turkey, pinions gobbling out of your face left, right and centre, all of them wrong. Somebody switched her. Switched her? What are you talking about? Somebody switched the bow, ladies. Who? That old bird who fainted at the auction this afternoon. Who was she, Miss Cavendish? Miss Cavendish? Who was she? <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. No idea. I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. I can tell you one thing, Charlie. It was genuine when it arrived at auction. All's fair in love, war in the antiques trade, Charlie. Every cloud has a silver... What's it? Excuse me. Badger. Badger. I think we've uncovered something really... Rather important, don't you, lovers? Mm. He's a true artist, Percy. Whoever he is, wherever he is. Who cares? There's always room for another genius. Cobblers. Man gets to the top of his tree, looks down, and there they all are. Every brand of monkey you can think of, swinging through the branches, lying, robbing, cheating, and knocking out bent pottery. <sighs> Same business. People like me, the ones who've made it. Mm. You're right, Charlie. Deep down, we all want to be you, don't we, Percy? I've been shafted before and will be again, so it's not the money. It's the principle. How much principle, Charlie? Thirteen hundred quid, man. Right. But it's not the money. Have a word with Cavendish, my old mate. See what she knows. The one thing she knows is the time is money. I'll knock off that rent you owe me. No, wipe off every penny. Because we're mates. Hmm? In spite of it all. We're mates. Hello. Charlotte. Jonathan. Morning. You know when you take a dislike to someone and you don't really know why? Jonathan. Too smooth. Too good looking. I'm probably too rich. <laughs> and what can I do for you? Well, you can tell me about Excuse some. Me. You're in the shop. Oh. You can tell me about some uh, hooky china. 
The bow lady. Ah, has Gimbert sent you to check up on me? Or is it pride, I wonder? The switch was made in your auction rooms, Cavendish. Yes, yes, of course it was. Charlotte, if you keep talking, the man's going to blur the shaft. Just take the photo, Jonathan. So who placed the... Charlotte, who placed the bow lady in the sale? I'm not dishing out my client list to you. God knows what you'd do with it. You could have the law breathing down your neck. Charlie knows people, though. It was sheer bad luck, and that's all there is to it. Lovejoy, excuse me, do you mind? I'm trying to photograph the uh, clock. Taking pictures for the insurance, hmm? Very wise. The police have a warehouse full of stuff just waiting to go home if the owners can prove it's theirs. I'll tell you one thing, Lovejoy. Mm. The person I sold that piece for bought it at Fulbury Market, so that's the end of that. Not necessarily. Is that the new man in your life? Do me a favour! Thought so. You're crazy about the guy. Fulbury is a market overt, young lady. You what, mate? That's you speak for, uh, sorry, would you mind repeating it? Market overt is an ancient law that allows good title to pass no matter what. Look, say I was to buy this from Billy here, right? Excuse me, Billy. I give him the money, this is mine. No matter who really owns it. No, no, I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. You've locked the automatic focus on the background instead of the bike. What you should have done is used a manual with a big aperture. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Litchfield. I'm Morning, so Eric. <laughs> Miss Cavendish. Can I help you, madam? I'd like these developed, please. How soon can you do them? For you, madam, an hour. It's a waste of time here, Miss Cavendish. I mean, look at this. That fuzz is meant to be my bike. Miss Cavendish, your address. Hello, Tom. You do look well. Doesn't Tom look well, Lovejoy? Say yes, for God's sake. But come, Tom, you don't half look well. I wish I told you. The thing's yours just because you buy it here. This place is a paradise for fences, man. There are more thieves around here than there are in the stock exchange, and that is a dickens of a lot of thieves. Now, is it this big? Or is it this big? Tom's kidney stone. Can we get back to business, please? Oh, sorry. Now, whoever sold the bow lady at the auction bought it here, right? I said they did. That's the beauty of this place, Beth. If the police ask any questions, you don't have to show them a receipt or anything. They've got to take your word for it. Hey, Danny, you seen Stefan Holbert? Oh, yes. Uh, he's over there, stuffing his face. No. If they're all villains here, how come you know most of them? Don't know most of them. Know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen her before. Why are you so sure? If I had, I'd sell it to friends of mine in Holland. Any mark on your wages, let me know, huh? Why couldn't someone else here have sold it? No, no, no. All China comes from me. No one else. Thanks, Stefan. Take care of yourself. I try, but for how much longer? What are your problems? Good times are nearly over, my friend. Some of your people lobby your parliament, change the law. Market to vet. Maybe she's soon no more, huh? Vet's on too, by sound of it. Mouth. Knock off the rent you owe me? When did I say that? Half past two this morning after your party. As Cavendish, my old mate, you said. See what she knows. My old mate? Your very word, so I asked her. Fat lot she told you, too. Came from a market overt. Oh, don't worry, I'm still working on it. And now, what about this rent, my old mate? Eh? Look, you bring me the bow lady, Lovejoy, and I'll knock off the rent. My old mate. I think you've excelled yourself, Martin. Should we put it in the shop window or try for another sale? Oh, a sale? They attract better money.
Jonathan. What's the panic? Oh, sorry, I've only just heard. They want me in Paris tomorrow. Oh. Leaving again so soon. Come on, come on, eat. to design the entire West Extension. It's a fantastic opportunity. I've got a pretty good idea what I want to do with it, too. Then go for it. The question is, why stop off here? I want you to come with me to Paris. <laughs> I can't, Jonathan. I'm terribly busy. No. I want you to come and live with me in Paris. Oh, I see. Just as I get everything organized here, you show up and expect me to drop everything and follow you. This is a very big break for me, Charlotte. Look, Jonathan, you know why I came home. I've got ambitions, too. Seems to me one of us would have to shell. Just think about it. Sleep on it. Can I have the bill? I'll be back in two days. I'll be here. I want the police. Hello? Yes, I've just got home and found I'd been broken into. No, I don't know what's been taken. I didn't feel like going in to find out. Oh, you were right, love. People walk in their front door calling out, Anybody there? And wallop, they get the answer over the back of the egg. My paintings. Bastards. So, what exactly is missing? Everything. Clock, pair of Georgian candlesticks. We'll make a list over coffee, shall we? Unless they've nicked that and all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the place for fingerprints in the morning. How big were these urns in the front garden? Big? Why? Well, it means there was more than one of them. Either that, or the bloke we're after has got a hernia the size of that teapot. <laughs> Any biscuits? What happens next, Mr Pulver? We ask local dealers to keep their eyes open. You know, tell us when this stuff hits the market. Providing it's not on a boat to Amsterdam, of course. On a boat? Well, stop it! Well, block the ports, mount an investigation. <laughs> Get in the queue, love. <laughs> well, there must be something we can do. Well, there is. Use your contacts. You know Lovejoy, don't you? Now, he's the type of bloke who could assist us with this. I mean, the rubbish he mixes with. Oh. If I could live that bloke's life for just one day, I'd wipe out half my caseload. They break open your front door, waltz in, waltz out again, 20 grand better off. Who the hell do these people think they are? Well, they think they're burglars. That's who they think they are. <sighs> I mean, I, uh, I could, you know, ask around a bit if you wanted, Charlotte, but, uh, well, if it's Dick Tracy you want, ask your friend Jonathan. He wouldn't know where to begin. Anyway, he's off to Paris this morning. Really? When are you taking that? Last night. Over dinner? Hmm? Hmm. This hotel? So you 
I had dinner at his hotel, me and my buck at your place. Stuff's being nicked, and he's off to Paris today. This all has a certain smoothness to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to steal from me. Never suspect a boyfriend. An old boyfriend. The old boyfriend. <sighs> we lived together in New York for a year. Mm -hmm. He wants me to go and live in Paris with him. Oh. How do you feel about that? <sighs> telling you all this hmm? will you help me or not I have expenses Charlotte 10 percent of the insurance valuation do you ever do anything for free Lovejoy that's a very natty idea but I don't think it'll catch on however I could give you a discount in return for name and address the person who put the bow lady in the auction <laughs> Whatever you come as. Charlie, you know I've always been a fashion victim. Oh, well. I suppose you can always use it for going to court in. Can I borrow the roller? Roller? Sure, it's in the shed. You go up and down a nice straight line. <laughs> no, Charlie. I need a nice car to match the suit to follow up a lead on the bow lady. Ever mindful of how best I can serve my mates, I've found out who put it in the auction. Take the discovery. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So, may I tell you a story? I got the furniture. Jane got the paintings, the dogs, and all the bits and pieces. Divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 don't be. Um, as far as I'm concerned, when the thing is over, it is over. But there is still that little something you always need for the corner of the room, isn't there? What's this? You know, a lot of people have expressed an interest. Oh, she's so ugly, she's almost beautiful. Uh, oh, there's this. Poor Apollo. Early 17th century. I'd rather discuss this over a late 20th century lunch. I really like this wooden monster, Miss Endicott. Very glad I bought it. Good. And, um, please call me Valerie, Mr. Catchpole. Oh, Eric. Do you, um, work around here, Eric? I'm in cheese. No, I buy and sell cheese. May sound dull, but it's really actually very interesting. Are you um? Are you? I don't know if I should really ask this, but are you um? Am I attached? Yes. He's a teacher. Oh. What's he teach? Pottery. Oh. No, I've always been fascinated by pottery ever since that film, you know, when, um, remember? Ah, oh, yes. <clears throat> I think they ever finished that pot. <laughs> Why pretend to be me, Lovejoy? Envy. His name's not in the trade. Yours isn't. Exactly, Miss Beth. <laughs> now, her name is Valerie Endicott, and if she calls up and wants to speak to an Eric Catchpole, remember that is me, not you. You, Eric, are somebody else. Who? Who do you want to be? Well, I was quite happy being me, believe it or not. Well, you can't be, because I'm you for now. Now, she's got a boyfriend, Tink, and his name is Martin Stiles, and he teaches pottery. Does his name ring a bell? No bell. Right, we'll find out what you can about him. Ask Percy if he knows who he is. Here we go. 
Well, the first thing we need is a bonfire. Oh, it's beautifully carved, Derek. 500 quid for a bit of stick. Uh, Tink, before I thump him, hmm? children, this is a ceremonial Maori fighting weapon. <laughs> I'm worth twice what I paid for it, so take it down to that sale in Thetford tomorrow, all right? Oh, listen, shouldn't we be looking for Charlotte stuff and all? Cutting it fine, Tink. Gordon Bennett, her wife's mother. George, this is a Maori fighting stick. I want a thousand pounds for it. We all be lucky. Pubs that way. If you don't fancy hanging about. Not too late, am I? No. One item. There's the lid. Crown Derby teapot. Yes. Name's Endicott. All right, all right. Nice. Where's the soup? Excuse me. Um, the person who brought this, where would I find him? Oh, you find him in the pub. Thanks. Um, how would I recognise him? Tweed soup, blackberry. Now, what's wrong? I sold that yesterday. Stay here. Cheers, Nick. First today. Oh! oh! Gracious me! Dear lady, I'm terribly no, sorry. No, not Please, at all. It was allow my me. fault. Let me buy you a drink in compensation. Well, that's very kind. Um, gin and tonic, please. A large one, please. We have a problem. A man came into the shop yesterday. I thought he was a customer. He's a dealer. Real name, Lovejoy. Heard of him? Mm-hmm. He played me like a fiddle. I even told him about you teaching pottery. Val! Wait, stop the sir. Stop, stop the sir! Good idea. Let's point ourselves out. He might be police, mightn't he? he? didn't look it. Look, I think we should just stay low for a while. Martin. No more pots. Martin. No more pots. Martin. Just keep calm. And I'll look after Mr. Lovejoy. Yeah? Hello, Eric? Yeah. It's Valerie. Valerie Endicott. Valerie? Ah! Right. Uh, no. Um, no, Eric's not here, I'm afraid. You said he was. You said you were him. No, no, I didn't. You said that. So who are you? Uh, I'm Reg. I'm his nephew. Uh, can I help you? Yes, um, tell him he has to come over. Something's happened. It's very important. Please, tell him. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, hello? No, wait a minute. Hello? I've just found out that Martin has been making copies of things. Um, figurines, plates, um, a teapot. And I've been selling them from here. I have no idea. To do it is bad enough, but to make me part of it thing is, he, um, he's kept the things he copied. Um, it's China mostly, uh, the teapot, um, a bow lady and a couple of mice and dogs. He said he'd rather break them than give them back. <laughs> um, how can I help out? There's a door around the side. There's a bolt at the top. These are the originals, and they're all mine. Yeah, it's... it's beautiful. My father left that to me. Would you help me pack up, Eric? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Thank you. Nice doing business with you. Thank you.
I'm a bit confused, Mr. Dill. The curse of your generation, Beth. Ask and all will be explained. Have you said to that man that his clock was Austrian, right? By, um, uh, Frank Kuntz or someone? No. Yeah. And you give him 300 quid for it. Well, which he was chuffed about, but, um, I think you've made a mistake. Well, uh, if he's made a couple of bob out of us, who are we to grumble? No, no, but it's the other way round, isn't it? I think it's French, that clock. Do you? Yeah. Look at this. Um, Etienne, Lenoir, Paris. Ormelou, Ma Three, four grand it says it's worth. I don't want him finding out and thinking it's been done. Then we'll have to keep very, very quiet about it, won't we? Lovejoy, just in time. Going well? I'm calling out the good people of this village to watch you being nicked. I well, haven't done anything yet. Oh, what? A villain? Oh, no, not I, your lordship. The years pudding I did was a clerical error. And after all the breaks I've given you... Bob? Where is it? What? Where's the stuff you nicked from Martin Stiles' place? Ah! Uh, your prints are all over his barn door. I can explain. The china was here, Bob. Just like I told you, there was a bow lady, a crown derby teapot here, and he's painted his glazes all around here, there's a pottery wheel here, there was a kiln over here, an electric one. What have you done with them, eh? I've no idea what he's talking about. You've moved it, haven't you? Okay. Hello, what are you doing here? Well, I might ask the same question of you, Eric. Eric? Believe me, Bob, I can explain. You always can, Lovejoy. Lovejoy? Call me a sentimental old fool, Eric. Hmm. The two things say you didn't break into that house for yourself. One, you'd been a sight more careful. And two, you've always been a mug where crumpet's concerned. Miss Endicott pulled your string and you got your what's it's called in it. She sent me up. So? Well, so? So, you help me and I help you. Oh. Oh, it's no good groaning. He who sups with the devil must expect to get wind. Here is a wad of photos. Here a pen. Here a pad. Look through them. If you recognise any, write down where you last saw them. Yeah, and you'll consider dropping the charges, eh? Right. Take sugar. I do today. Right. Just a minute, Eric. We need, we need the base. What are you doing? And we need a background. Oh, right. Come on, then. In there. Yes, right. Glad you spotted that, too. Was that the real one or the copy? It's the copy, Beth. Hmm. Has anyone done anything about Charlotte's stuff? We haven't had time. We're getting close, Eric. We need at least six close pictures of the base. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I'm just taking a couple with a flash. What do you want me for? I want you to go to Downham with Eric tomorrow. Why? Policeman Pulver had a pile of photos of missing gear all developed at a little place in the high street there called Superclicks. Superclicks? Yeah. We've got one of those in our high street. Huh? Well, check out the one in Downham first. They might have moved to Pastures New and Charlotte's could have been the first field. Are you sure you're close enough? Look, it's all right. I've gone macro. I'll bet you think we've come here to beat the hell out of you. We don't beat our parties. We put them to work. What do you mean, work? <laughs> there speaks a teacher. Let's, uh, let's give you a hand with that, Martin. Hey? I've got a few things to talk about. <laughs> we know you're not the mechanic, Martin. You're just the oily rag. Valerie leads and you follow. Not necessarily, no. Look at this. What is it? I've no idea. Yes, you do. It's a blow-up of the bow lady that you made. Exquisitely made, Martin. Oh, thank you. And this? In the corner? Yeah. What's yeah. that? See? What is it? I've no idea. 
This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. This little piggy had nut cutlers, and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy baked itself into posterity. Oh, you know, that boy's right. He has moved on. Yeah, well, we'd better check it out anyway. Morning, madam. Hi. Look, um, I know it sounds odd, but I brought some holiday snaps in there to be developed. You were about a year too late, love. Bloke before me, that was. Oh. Where is he now, do you know? No idea. Didn't leave an address. Oh, I asked him to when he gave me the keys. And that was the last you heard of him? No. No, as a matter of fact, I sold him a bike a couple of weeks later. Said he was going to get fit. Still didn't leave a forwarding address. Well, do you remember his name, Mr. Uh, Jeffries? Shepherd, I think it was. Yeah, Derek Shepherd. Thank you very much, Mr. Jeffries. Shepherd. Okay, come on. You ready, Tim? Ready. Let's go. Right. Hi, Val. How's things? This must seem like old times to you. Here's Martin slaving over some wet clay, knocking out copies for you to flog. Today's special is a cow creamer. Down the cow. That's it. And back up to me again. Thank you very much indeed. And I've got a prediction to make about this cow creamer, Val. Call me smug if you like, but I think you are going to buy this cow creamer. Look, yeah. Stop! Go! Oh, stop! The slight! Get it! Oh, cut! Oh, 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 let me turn this off. Chop! There. Oh. Right. So, Derek Shepherd, eh? Yeah. Derek Shepherd. Same bloke that runs super clicks in the village. But he left Downham a year ago. See, Derek. Develops your pictures, and if he likes what he sees, he pays you a visit, cleans you out. Oh. Yeah, but how do we prove what he's up to, Lovejoy? We get him to do it again. Well, first things first, Beth. Got another little gig for you first. Can I help you? Oh, um, I'm not sure. I... Well, I just wondered if you'd be interested in buying something. Such as? Well... Is this yours? Yeah, well, my dad said I could have it. It's been in the family for years. I just need the readies, really. Well, I don't normally buy things like this, of course. You see, there's no call for them. Right. Well, I'll give you £50 for it. What? Really? Oh, that's... that's brilliant. Thanks a lot. Come through. Kimbert? Charlie, it's Percy. Percy Broderick. Ah, Percy. Listen, Charlie, I have today seen the most exquisite little cow creamer up at Boxford. Oh. But is he genuine? Well, I tell you what, I'll come up there with you if you like. Check it over. Percy, you're a gent. I'm on my way. Bye. Um, have you ever had your stuff photographed, Charlie, in case of uh, bonus? I've been thinking about it. Been one or two heists somewhere lately. Yeah, that, that lad of Lovejoy's, Eric, he takes a lovely photo. Eric? Uh, Hello. In the window, uh, the cow jug. We'd like to see it. Certainly. There we are, Purse. Mm. Forgive me, it's just that I hate being cheated. Having an expert along to check things over saves an awful lot of unpleasantness. And he certainly knows how to be unpleasant. Just businesslike. Yeah. Yes, well... You will be pleased to hear that in the words of a mutual friend, this is the real McCoy. How much? Three hundred pounds. Jonathan. I took the job. I'm glad. I think it's the right thing. Yeah, I brought some champagne. Oh. Right now, all I need is a bucket of tea. <laughs> you can't get
get a decent cup of tea in Paris, you know, Jonathan. Look, have you uh, slept on it? Thought about it? I didn't really need to, Jonathan. I'm sorry. But why? I mean, this place is like the back of beyond. What the hell's going to happen here that's too good to miss, huh? Simple. My auction house is going to be the best in the country. And your father's going to be so proud of you, isn't he? What's he got to do with anything? Oh, come on, Charlotte. He called you home. You came running. Please, Jonathan, don't use that one on me, OK? Look, I'm not trying to use it. Look, I'm just... So you think I'm here for all the wrong reasons? Maybe I am. But that doesn't mean I should just chuck it all in. Well, you chucked it all in once before, as I recall. Huh? A life in New York, a life with me, it was terrific. Why? Just to be the son he never had? My father and I sorted that out 25 years ago. Now, there was a boy down the road who used to bully me, just like you're doing now. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying... I haven't finished. Don't plead with him, Dad said. No tricks, no feminine wiles, just go straight out to him and whack him in the mouth. And I did. So? So, on that day, he made me prove, not to him, because he already knew it, but to me, that I was just as good as any son. So, any day now I get my things back, is that it? All tidily parceled up in a gothic trunk? That depends. Miss uh, V. Endicott? Yes, what's this? Password for you. Can you sign here, please? Thank you very much. Hi, Val. How's it? This must seem like old times to you, eh? You? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Language. Oh, you must watch this video. It's a real weepy film. It's all about this fellow who makes cow creamers. The one, in fact, he just sold to your last customer, Mr. Gimbert. Mr. Gimbert also bought the fake bow lady. I think he'd really enjoy this film. Perhaps we could lend him one of our copies, Love Joy. Oh, we should give one to Policeman Pulver, too. He loves a good story, doesn't he? Or perhaps you could just tell him it was your idea to break into Martin's barn, not mine. Hmm? He'd understand. Just tell him you had a tiff with Martin and you're getting your own back. Yeah, and while we're here, I'll take the original bow lady plus Mr. Gimbert's money. Mine is, of course, the 50 quid. <laughs> Where on earth did you? Charlie, Charlie, please. Hmm? Check her over for me, will you, Percy? Oh, 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 I have, Charlie. It's the real McCoy. Love, Joy, I, I want you to tell me where you... Charlie, I just told you, no questions, eh? Uh, smile, Mr. Gimbert. <laughs> ah. Is uh, that all the photos, then, Mr. Gimbert? Oh, no, something else for you. Through here, in the study. Sorry. Ah, oh, what do you think of my latest? Percy's idea. What do you reckon, lovers? Ah, oh, it's beautiful, Charlie. Beautiful. Mm. I knew you'd like him, Lovejoy. Oh, and um, Charlie. What's that? Rent. Lovejoy. We had a deal, remember? And I'm a man of honor. Oh, you're a real mate, Charlie. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. I wonder if you'd develop this film for me. Certainly, sir. I'm afraid it'll have to be Saturday now. Oh, I'm away for the weekend. I'll pop in on Monday. Very good, sir. Name and address? Charles Gimbert, Elsham Hall. have to bring that stilton. I can't stand the smell of it. I didn't bring it, Lovejoy. It walked here on its own. Besides, you should never turn your nose up at cheese. It could be our next big earner. Hmm? A couple of months ago, one ounce of 200-year-old Tibetan cheese went for a fortune. Well, call me finicky, but I prefer to eat things that are younger than myself. 
more coffee. And, uh, is that Bob? This better be worth it, Lovejoy. For your sake, I have been running around like a blue ass fly checking those addresses of yours. Not one was kosher. Well, my memory's terrible these days, Arthur. Ask Nigel here. I asked for some backup. They're here, Bob. What? Take those jackets off for God's sake. Suppose you left the panda car down the road, did you, lads, with the uh, blue light flashing? Yeah. I'm worried we're a bit far off the target here. Yeah, we could always line the pond, you know, and practice the old bamboo technique. Yeah, OK, OK. You turn the alarm off, Lovejoy. Oh! Of course I did. Charlie's in London, so all we've got to do is sit down nicely and wait for them. Sit down. Nicely. Follow me. These photos are terrible. I mean, that could be anything. Who cares? Most things here are worth a few quid. You said he was away. That's not him, is it? Really, his own boss. Not today. No. Let me deal with that. I said no. Let's go. Hey, man. This place is a gold mine. Kill the others. Now let's go. Give me a light! Give me a light! The law says I should caution you. Lay me up, you buggers, and I'll thump you. There, consider yourselves cautioned. What a thing of joy is a satisfied customer. Charlie Gimbert thinks I saved him from being burgled. Bob Polner's over the moon at nabbing Valerie, Martin, Derek Shepherd, and the Neil Brothers, who also sang like a pair of canaries and told me that they'd flogged most of Charlotte's stuff to Stephen Holbeck, who let me have it back at a very reasonable price. Lovely. Thank you so much. Another satisfied customer. Come in. How much do I owe you? Well, that's, uh... No hurry. You, you remember you once asked me if I ever did anything for nothing? Oh, silly question, really. <laughs> no, not at all. Today I will. Provided you tell me where this stuff's going. Paris. And why? Mind your own business. What about um, Jonathan? You, uh, you packed him off, then? He went of his own accord. Go to Paris? Fall out, did you? Hmm? We did not fall out, and you're doing it again. Doing what? You're wheedling things out of me, things I don't want you to know. <laughs> no, I just find it interesting, you know, you fall out, Jonathan goes to Paris, you send this stuff on, but... Stop you, it! You're staying here, are you? But of course I am. Who needs Paris when they can have Suffolk? And someone like you, poking his nose into their business. It'll be 500 pounds. Cash. <laughs>